we're going to be smacked in the face again with Vince McMahon news. And over the past couple of uh, days, it's been about the fact that he was selling off the rest of his stock in TKO, and he's going to be completely out of the company. A lot of people wondering, what does that mean? You know, it could mean a lot of things, and I don't think he's looking to invest in an island somewhere near Russell Simmons has his and near where Diddy's may be at some point. I don't think it's about that. It could just very well be that he is going to be looking to settle for a whole lot of money. He may expect to lose a whole lot of money. He said he's going to be fighting this lawsuit with all of the powers that he has through spokespeople, so... You know, he's going to have a lot of legal costs built up that way. Maybe Linda is finally saying, I'm done with this. We can end this dog and pony show. I'm out. <laughs> you know, who knows what the reasons could be. Everything is speculation right now. But this morning, WrestleNomics Brandon Thurston posted up on his Twitter that the waiver of summons dated March 15th for Vince McMahon and WWE finally appeared on the docket for Grant versus WWE at L. The same date as the waiver of the summons for John Laurinaitis. So Janelle Grant's lawyer and Callis had told WrestleNomics previously in an interview that all three parties were giving a waiver of summons on the same date, which this confirms. The defendants have 60 days from March 15th to respond, which is May 14th. McMahon is represented by Jessica T. Rosenberg from the Kasowitz Benson Torres firm, which was indicated in the New York Post article with comments from her and in statements to WrestleMania slash post wrestling. WWE is being represented by Daniel Toll from the Paul Weiss firm. WWE has been represented by Paul Weiss in other matters, including the latter part of the MLW lawsuit. WWE also worked with the firm on the TKO merger. So, Things are continuing to roll along there uh, when it comes to that case. Uh, something that actually plays into the NXT review coming up later on in the program. WWE has looked into Ronda Rousey's claims against Drew Gulak. And you can find all this stuff up on the front page of the website over at WrestlingObserver.com. All those guys do a great job. Joseph Courier, Ethan Renner, Josh Nason, Brian Rose, the whole lot of them. And you can find this up there. During an appearance on News Nation earlier this month, Rousey accused Gulak of inappropriately pulling on her pant drawstrings backstage at a WWE event in 2022. Gulak later claimed in a Twitter post that he inadvertently touched her drawstring while reaching out to shake her hand. It was just my opinion, just an all timer, and you just probably shouldn't have posted anything at all. I just, I, I don't know. I, hopefully that one does not end up on his tombstone. But me, you know, I just, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how that would have worked. Our own Brian Alvarez wrote to his subscribers on his ex that WWE has investigated Rousey's claims and interviewed people about what happened, while the results of the investigation have not been disclosed. Gulak has been removed from WWE programming. If you saw NXT last night, there was a confrontation between the D'Angelo family and the No Quarter Catch crew. And what this will eventually lead to is Tony D'Angelo going after the Heritage Cup. But part of the conversation was about the fact that the No Quarter Catch crew came up to the D'Angelo family and asked them to do a job for them, and that job was to be disposing of the garbage. And while Gulak's name was not directly said, apparently, no quarter catch crew has not paid up yet, and that's what led to some of the other interactions that they had that I'll get into a little bit later on during the NXT review, but Drew Gulak looks to be out of the way. Uh, there was a report, and again, I don't, I, I remember seeing this. I can't say who, you know, attributed to who exactly it was, but apparently uh, Gulak during the Hall of Fame ceremony, a producer saw him, pulled him out of there. Uh, he has been relieved of any other duties that he was doing for right now, has not been officially let go, but that's where that stands with Drew Gulak. Another interesting thing up on the front page of the website today, subscriber exclusive, and uh, Wrestling Observer Newsletter, obviously, uh, the for years, 
uh, the, the standard when it comes to the, the wrestling journalism and newsletter business. Well, up on the website right now, if you're a subscriber, instead of waiting until Friday, you can get many of Dave's articles a little bit earlier. And one of them, uh, one of the pieces that he has done is about Rossi Ogawa's new promotion, Dream Star Fighting Marigold, uh, which had its opening press conference this past Monday. Uh, Dave says it is true. There is a working agreement between the promotion and WWE. Not a surprise as everybody I, I think that pays attention to the situation really felt like obviously this was going to be the case, especially with Julia factoring into the decision. But this kind of, again, just puts another uh, a check mark next to that. WWE flew both Julia and Ogawa to WrestleMania to make a deal. Ogawa is attempting to get EO Sky and Kyrie Sane to Marigold for a major show this summer that will be announced shortly. While not finalized due to visa issues, Julia is expected to be working for both companies for a time before eventually moving to the United States with her family. That may be one of the reasons that she is debuting in Toronto is because that may just be logistically the easiest place to get her right now where she can officially work. WWE is not going to get into any deal like what happens in Mexico or things like that where something's going to go sideways when it comes to, to visas. They want all that settled, so that's what's going on there. Marigold has announced their debut show to take place on March 20th with a main event of Julia and a mystery partner against Saray and a mystery partner. Now that WWE and Mari Gold are getting together, hopefully Saray does not have to go back to wearing the amulet that she had while she was in NXT. Uh, the company has announced 16 regulars, including six women from the Actress Girls promotion, which uh, Fuka, a former professional wrestler and a very noted trainer, had been a part of. Those women were not happy with their management and wanted to do more wrestling since that's a promotion that focuses a lot more on singing and dancing. You think it's bad here, folks. There's singing and dancing on over there, and they wanted to do more wrestling, and Fuka is one of the original trainers of the original stardom women. So it is Ogawa, Fuka, and Nane Takahashi, who is technically a independent Joshi wrestler. They are all getting back together. They were the original founders of stardom, so they've announced some other people coming in. Rosilla, who is the daughter of Ulf Herman, who had a cup of coffee in ECW, Myla Grace out of Northern Ireland, and Zeta Steele out of Northern Virginia, who are all going to be working for the group. What was a unique hairstyle worn by men in the 60s? Pompadour. Mop and conch, whatever what? that is. I beg your pardon, excuse Mop me? And Cock and, and pump. Conk. Say that yeah, one more time. Nobody else talk. Pop and conk. Yeah. Are you sure, Granny? Read it again. Mep o p. Mop. Comma. Conk. Mop conk. Mop conk. Conk. C o n k. Okay. Look it up. Okay. All right. Mop conk. Mop conk. That's two different things. I know. <laughs> God damn it. Duh. <laughs> Why is she mad at us? Because <laughs> we're idiots. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.